or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so excited that you are here and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. Today's video is one that I'm interested to look deeper into with you guys and dig a little deeper with because we are once again looking into another paranormal game slash ritual that people have been playing for years but especially now with Halloween have been playing a lot more recently. Now I actually get a ton of requests from you guys to talk more about different paranormal games that people play, different rituals, the risks in them and just kind of looking through them but this particular one I haven't heard a ton about and honestly the end goal seems to be different based on the intentions of the individual playing the game. We are going to be diving into a dangerous mere ritual called an alternate soul. Now whether you're supposed to see an alternate part of your soul or see a soul from an alternate universe, alternate reality or alternate vibration is pretty much unknown. But nonetheless, it is absolutely chilling and I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it. But before we get into today's video, I would very quickly like to thank today's video sponsor, Geology. Now I'm sure that you've heard of Geology and their award-winning personalized skincare, but today I am so excited to share with you guys Geology's Custom Control Hair Care Co-Wash. Basically, this brand new hair care co-wash is the shampoo killer. Now you may not know this because I wasn't 100% aware of this before either, but shampoo can actually damage your hair as it can sometimes strip your hair of the essential oils your scalp produces, therefore leaving your hair overly dry and overly washed. Co-wash removes buildup and cleanses your hair without the big lather, the harsh ingredients, and without stripping your hair of its natural essential oils. Lately, I have been on just an overall journey of trying to improve my skin and my hair and I've been learning a lot about what creates healthy hair or what makes for healthy hair and it truly starts at the scalp. You have to look at your hair care as skincare for your scalp. But better yet, Geology's co-wash is formulated without the harsh ingredients often found in other hair care products, is color safe, and is safe and good for all hair types. It is available in two different formulas, the cooling hair co-wash with tea tree and aloe, and the smoothing hair co-wash with avocado and coconut. I will have a link for you guys at the very top of my description, or you can head to geology.com and insert code Haley70. There you can take their free skin and hair diagnostic and get 70% off of a skincare trial and 30% off of the co-wash. You'll be able to try both products at an absolutely unbelievable price. So again, I will have it linked at the top of my description, or you can head to geology.com and insert code Haley70 to receive 70% off of a skincare trial and 30% off of the co-wash. But thank you so much to Geology for helping improve the quality of my hair and for sponsoring today's video. But without further ado, let's get into this paranormal game slash ritual because as I mentioned, I'm very curious to hear what you guys think of this one in comparison to other games and rituals that we've dove into. when you go online and you're searching in for this particular ritual, the alternate soul or an alternate soul mirror ritual, it's not as easy to find experiences on this or even exactly what is supposed to happen. And right off the get go, I think that is a massive red flag. If you don't even know what you're actually summoning, who you're summoning, what you're meant to be summoning and what exactly you're doing, there's a lot more risks involved in that than the type of ritual where it's all laid out in front of you and you can choose to take that risk or play it safe. So one particular website that I dove into it says that the goal of the game is to awaken your alternate soul. So it's almost supposed to be a representation of an alternate version of yourself. Now some websites that I was reading through said that it's almost like an awakening of parts of yourself that you may be hiding or may not have seen or may not know. So for some people, if you're going into this game or ritual with that kind of mindset, it could be a beautiful thing or a really dark experiences. I think that there are plenty of people 
who have parts of themselves that they don't even realize they have their beautiful, wonderful parts of their souls that are just screaming to be released out into the world and shown. But I think for others, there are people who may have some inner demons and some darkness within them and they may see that manifest before them. But moving on even to another website, I saw a site that said that you're essentially summoning a monster. Now among many of these different forums and websites talking about this particular game slash ritual, they all kind of had that common denominator of a monster, of what you're going to see more often than not is a dark representation of yourself or a dark version of yourself. Some people believe it's your alter ego, but the dark alter ego of you that exists within another dimension. And there's other people who believe that it's just a monster in and of itself. But majority have come to the conclusion that what you're going to see may be very traumatizing. So first and foremost, this is a game played solo. I'm always especially weary of rituals and games that are played solo as well when you could be dancing in the darkness because you don't have somebody to see the warning signs as to if you're shifting, if the energy is shifting to pull you back to reality, but this is played with one person. It requires a mirror, a candle, matches or a lighter, blood, a timekeeping device, an alarm, it's optional but highly recommended, a timer, again, optional but highly recommended, and a dark, quiet room. So you're supposed to start shortly before midnight, kind of like getting all of your different supplies together, getting everything in order. Time is really of the essence with this particular ritual from what I've learned, so that's why they recommend the timer and the clock. You're supposed to set up the mirror if necessary, so if you're not playing somewhere that already has a mirror there, and you should be able to sit or stand comfortably before it because essentially you're gonna be viewing your own reflection and be sat there or standing there for an extended period of time. So you're supposed to close any curtains, kind of make it as dark as possible, and then you're gonna check the time. You want it to still be before midnight, um, is what they're saying here right now. You really need to keep a good eye on the clock. It then says to place a candle before the mirror and you place matches or a lighter nearby. Now you're supposed to ensure that your blood is accessible. You're supposed to check again, is it midnight? Keep checking the clock. They really emphasize this in all of the different forums that I've went through as to how to play. So then you're supposed to turn off the lights and if you're using an alarm, which again, they really recommend it, you're supposed to set the alarm to go off for precisely 12.17 a.m. They don't specify why 12.17 a.m. I will check in like the facts section if there's a reasoning for this, but you are supposed to set it for that precise time. You're still supposed to keep an eye on the clock. It should be, they're saying about a minute or two before midnight now. You're supposed to keep watching. A few seconds before midnight, it says for you to set the time and count down 10 minutes. But at midnight precisely, you're supposed to light the candle, stand before the mirror, and begin. Then it says, beginning precisely at midnight with the candle lit, the blood nearby, and if using the alarm and timer, gaze into the mirror and you need to like really focus as best you can on your reflection within the mirror. You're supposed to meet your own eyes in the mirror, really stare into yourself and hold your gaze. Preferably, you're not supposed to be blinking a ton. And you stay there for 10 minutes. You do not look away for those entire 10 minutes, hence the 10 minute timer that we've set. When the 10 minutes have passed and your timer has gone off, if using, you're supposed to use your fingertip and your supply of blood and draw a line across the mirror directly over your reflection's eyes. You're not supposed to look away while doing this. You're supposed to keep your eyes like really, really locked in on your reflection. Keep your eyes on your reflection's eyes or at least where your eyes should be. Um, if your hand, if your hand, if you had not blindfolded them. Oh, so that's what the blood is. So they just explain here for that the blood is essentially to be a blindfold. Interesting. If your reflection remains as is, the ritual has failed. Do not proceed, extinguish the candle, wipe the blood and exit the room. Do not return to this room until the sun has risen. If your reflection begins to change, the ritual has succeeded and you may proceed, but do not look away from the mirror. You're supposed to watch your reflection and it's supposed to be shifting and unforming and reforming and it literally says here to not be afraid of what you're seeing, no matter how twisted and terrifying it may be or grow. And above all, once again, but this is really bold this time, do not look away. You're supposed to observe the creature in the mirror. So this is what I was talking about. Like other ones will call it a monster. Some will call it a demon. You're supposed to observe this creature because it says here, this is now in fact a creature. And you're supposed to take note of its appearance. 
What does it sound like? How does it move? Try to get as many details as you can, but again, you cannot look away. And this is another part, I know I'm interrupting here in the process, but if you can't look away, imagine doing a ritual, expecting that, you know, it's just to spook you, it's not real. You're seeing a creature, a monster, a dark entity literally manifesting in front of you within your own reflection, but you cannot look away or something bad will happen. Hard stuff to do. It says, keep watching as the creature will begin to move towards you. Keep watching as it approaches the glass between you and it. Keep watching, but be ready. Watch and wait. At 12.17, when your alarm goes off, you're supposed to put the candle out. You must extinguish it at precisely 12.17 a.m., which is interesting. It then says that if you've done this all correctly, you've closed it out, done it properly, the creature will disappear. Once the creature is gone, you're supposed to clean up the blood and um, turn on the lights and exit the room. Here's where it gets really creepy, you guys. From here on out, be mindful of any reflective surfaces you may encounter as you go about your life. From mirrors to tea kettles to shiny things, basically anything that reflects. So like even me looking right now into my camera lens, I can see a reflection of myself if I look hard enough. That in and of itself. It says that if you ever catch your reflection after this, looking at you in a way that it shouldn't be, you're supposed to run, or at the very least, throw a sheet over the reflective surface. surface sorry. It then says, this is really interesting. You need to not clear the building in which the dark, quiet room is of other people, whatever, which is interesting because there are some rituals where like you cannot do it in a house or in a building with other people who are not willing to participate and haven't left. But it says that you cannot be disturbed once you begin. Like once you have that gaze going, you have to stick with it. And it says that the timekeeping device and the alarm and timer don't have to be separate. It could be one device, like a smartphone with all of it in it. But here's where it also gets a little bit weird. Regarding the blood, it says it doesn't have to be your own. Although it does go on to say that it needs to be legal and consensual and safe. But like one example that they give here is that you could go to your local butcher and acquire like a small quantity of animal blood and like put it in a container and have it there for the ritual as well. So it doesn't really matter where it is that you're getting some. But it's it's really interesting because they're even talking about the different phenomena of which how when a human stares at another human face in low light conditions for an extended period of time, you can start to see that warping. And there are many people who believe that that's in fact what happens in a ritual like this or even at times Bloody Mary. But there are other people who have had experiences after said ritual that have said that they've seen their own face looking at them in like a dark, sinister way in things going forward, that they saw a specific entity that they now see in like reflections in the dark and whatnot, which is so creepy. And there are other people who said that they literally believe they summon some sort of dark entity. But again, nobody knows what this alternate soul is. Is it a reflection of you? Is it just your human mind trying to process your own reflection and low lighting? Or is it some sort of manifestation of an entity? I mean, we don't really know. And again, on here, there's only like one question that they had for this particular forum in regards to this ritual. And that is whether or not the, cr the creature is representation of yourself or like, like what's deep down within you or is it an actual entity? And they went on to respond, maybe, maybe not. Tread carefully regardless. So there's a lot of unknowns with this particular ritual and I think that's probably why it's been so requested recently. I actually had to ask myself if I've ever covered this. I've done so many different mirror rituals that I was sitting here rocking my brain like, have I spoken about this before? Because we dove into so many and a lot of them have similar elements to them. But nonetheless, I think when dabbling with the other side in general, you have to be so careful. You have to know how to protect yourself, know the rules. Like if they're telling you, do not break that stair. You need to close out the candle at specifically 12, 17 a.m. You need to follow that whether you believe in it or not because when you're messing with the other side, you just never know what you could be bringing forth and how real these things could be. I also think that anytime you're going into a ritual, you should be made aware of what it is you're summoning and this just has so many open ends for me um, and so many different ways it could go. So I'm very curious to hear in the comment section below what you guys think of this particular ritual. 
Do you think it is a psychological thing to do with the low lighting and the reflection of a human face with a human face beginning to warp after staring at it? Do you believe that it is summoning some sort of dark entity? Do you believe it's a window into your soul or an alternate version of yourself? Please let me know all of your theories down in the comment section below. And that is it for today's video. Once again, I would just absolutely love to thank Geology for sponsoring today's video. As mentioned, you can head to geology.com and enter code Haley70. You'll receive 70% off of a skincare trial and 30% off of the co-wash. So make sure to click the link at the very top of my description or head to geology.com and enter code Haley70. And thank you so much to Geology for sponsoring. If you are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my content, I'd seriously love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button and please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness and until next time, I love you.